Good morning, everyone, and welcome to a new Foro Competencia Breakfast. Um, to, today, we have the privilege to have as a guest speaker, Victor Fernandez, who's a commissioner at CADE in Brazil. And he will be talking about a cutting edge topic uh, um, that everyone wants to know more about the potential competitive effects of the AI regulations, um, which is something that is, has become trendy. <laughs> um, Victor, the floor is yours. <clears throat> Buenos dias a todos. Uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, first of all, I'd like to, to thank you, Julian, for, for inviting me for this. Uh, it is indeed a, a great pleasure to be here. And especially, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to, to get in touch with uh, people from, from Latin America, competition law experts from Latin America. Uh, it's very, very important for, for us at Kaji to, to make these connections. So thank you for, for, for this opportunity indeed. Um, and for, for today, I have prepared some, some a few slides. Uh, of course, I, I do not want to uh, overbounder you with that, but I will share it with you. And of course, I can I can send it to you afterwards. Uh, but but thank you uh, indeed for 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 this this opportunity, uh, and it's a uh, it's a, a a nice event, uh, and I think that after this this few slides, uh, it. I would be very happy to, to discuss with you more broadly, not only about the topics of this presentation, but more broadly about competition law in, in Latin America and our perspectives here. Uh, so uh, to, to, before it starts, uh, let me introduce myself more properly. Um, so as Julian has said, I am currently commissioner at Kaji. Uh, I have worked at Kaji before uh, two times uh, as a chief of staff, uh, especially I had the, the great honor of, of serving uh, as a chief of staff of Commissioner Paul Rounier, who has joined us today. Um, um, and that, that was a, a very important experience for me. Um, and then I came back now uh, to Kaji as, as a commissioner. Uh, I've been serving as a commissioner since 2022. Um, and alongside with that, I have uh, been teaching competition law in Brazil for, for, for a few years right now. I have uh, written a, a PhD dissertation uh, about the topic of um, competition law and digital markets. And since then, I have been publishing some, some pieces about, about the topic and about ex-ante regulation of digital markets as well. Um, so I've been trying to, to cover these topics that are going to discuss today, both uh, on a professional track and in an academic track as well. Um, and, and for today, I have prepared some very uh, broad overview about what is going on in Brazil, both in terms of digital markets regulation and artificial intelligence regulation, which is a topic that has draw a lot of attention in, from Kaji over, over the, last, the last few months. So, uh, and of course, um, much what I'm gonna say here um, has a lot in common up with what is going on in, in other jurisdictions. So I would be more than happy to, to know, to hear from you uh, and what are the, the differences and, 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 and the connections with uh, other jurisdictions around this, these topics here. Um, so I have prepared, as I said, a, a few slides. Uh, first of all, covering the discussion about uh, digital markets regulations more properly, uh, the discussion about ex ante regulation in Brazil. And then uh, we will talk a little bit about the AI regulation and how how Kaji is involved in the debate about the AI uh, proposed bill uh, and why is that so important for us at Kaji to take uh, a few steps in, in that discussion. Um, of course, please feel, feel free to, to intervene and to make any questions during this, this presentation. I will be more, more than happy to, to hear from you. Um, so 
Uh, first of all, um, a few words about um, the stock markets regulation in Brazil. Um, taking a step back is it's important to give you uh, a more a broader notion about uh, what is the current status uh, of the the competition law enforcement in digital markets in Brazil. Uh, so over the last years, Kaji uh, has taken a very cautious approach to digital markets, uh, and that's due to, to several reasons. Uh, but the fact is that we have uh, a very strong um, competition law legislation, uh, which is pretty much focused on, on the consumer welfare standard. And, and because of that, we have taken this decision of adopting a more cautious approach to, to, to these markets over the, the last years. And we had uh, brought a few cases against uh, big tech companies, uh, but only a very few of them have reached a final decision. So we have um, uh, ruled interesting, three interesting cases involving Google. Uh, most of them uh, have some interesting parallels with the AU cases. Uh, we had ruled, for instance, the, the Google Shopping case in 2011. And we have also ruled two other cases, one of them involving Google AdWords, uh, involving uh, more broadly um, the, the discussion about uh, uh, advertising in, in Google Ad Stack. Uh, and other case, which is Google scrapping, uh, which discussed uh, the undue appropriation of third-party reveals uh, by by uh, Google affiliated uh, platforms. Uh, and alongside with it, we have we have uh, other cases which are still ongoing. Um, uh, actually, uh, the in the last month, the the Jedi Blue, Blue case was. Uh, finally decided by the general superintendents, but the other cases are still ongoing in, in Brazil. Uh, and, and in this ruled cases, we, we can see that uh, Kaji has struggled uh, to establish a clear theories of harm, especially in the Google shopping case, which was uh, eventually uh, uh, not convicted in Brazil. So Kaji has not convicted Google for 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 self preferencing in, in Google Shopping case, um, and that highlights that it might be very difficult to to uh, establish this this theories of harm and legal tasks for this kind of, of practice, uh, and also uh, some of these investigations uh, took several years. Uh, we can see that the, the Google Shopping case took around uh, seven and a half years. Uh, since it was opened in 2011. And more recently, Kaji has indeed focused on digital markets and digital platforms, but from the perspective of most favorite nation clauses and some exclusivity clauses in, in more uh, regional markets, we have, we have some very interesting examples, uh, such as the iFood case, which is a case involving um, a food app delivery platform in Brazil, the largest one, uh, and other case involving uh, um, a platform of intermediation of fitness studios and gyms in Brazil, which is called um, the Gym Pass case. Uh, and both of them uh, were cases involving platforms, but they eventually were closed after a cease and desist agreement with, with Kaji uh, over the last few years. But this is the, the general big picture about the competition law enforcement itself uh, in this regard. Um, and in the end of 2022, um, it was uh, filed before the National Congress uh, the first bill aimed at regulating uh, competition in, in digital markets. So it was the first ex ante regulation proposal that we have saw in Brazil. Uh, and it's important to, to emphasize here that this proposal kind of came off out of nowhere. Uh, all of a sudden, we have seen this proposal moving forward in, in the Congress, but it, this proposal was not preceded by a public consultation or neither by uh, a government initiative in Brazil. Um, so it was pretty much an initiative that came from the, the, the parliament itself. Uh, and then this, this proposal was filed in, in, in November of 2022. Uh, 
Uh, and that's a very interesting proposal from, from several aspects. Uh, it is uh, especially inspired by the EU Digital Markets Act. Uh, but as said, and, and the, the justification of this bill, uh, this bill intends to be much less detailed than the Digital Markets Act. So uh, it also proposes an, an asymmetric uh, regulation. So focusing on a very few players uh, that would have this special power as gatekeepers, uh, but it would it, it intends to be uh, much less much more flexible than the the, the digital markets act. Uh, one very interesting aspect of this legislation that has concerned Kaji uh, very much over the last years is that this legislation assigns to the telecommunication regulator uh, the role of this new legislation for, for digital markets. So it has uh, raised some questions about what is uh, the best agency uh, to, to handle this. And of course, we at Kaji, we, we believe that Kaji is the best agency, uh, but that was, uh, this is proposal uh, gives the, the floor to, to Anatel, to the telecom regulation, to the telecom regulator to, to enforce this, this, this proposal. And just to give you a, a very broader review about this, this piece of regulation, um, uh, it has been much criticized in Brazil, especially because we think that uh, the thresholds for designating large platforms, which is which we are going to be subject to this, to this legislation, the threshold uh, does not seem to be very well calibrated. Uh, so... Actually, the, the, the only threshold that is set in this proposal is that uh, platforms uh, uh, getting uh, annual revenue over 70 million uh, reais in Brazil. So it would be around uh, maybe uh, less than uh, 20 million uh, dollars of revenue annually. Uh, so it seems to be a very low threshold um, and actually, there are some some studies that have been conducted by um, some internet associations in Brazil, uh, making some simulations uh, and showing that if this uh, revenue threshold is uh, effectively applied in Brazil, we would have around 200 uh, gatekeepers in, in Brazil. And of course, that's, that does make any sense for, for our economy to have 200 designated platforms for, for this kind of, of legislation. Uh, and also, uh, this legislation does not set some clear boundaries about where are the sectors that uh, should be involved in the regulation, uh, because it it's only says that uh, the, plat the, the legislation is, uh, uh, is uh, indeed it, it is intended to cover online intermediation platforms. But actually, as a matter of fact, Every platform in uh, every digital platform is an online intermediation platform, so we can virtually cover any any sector in in, in Brazil. Uh, yeah. And most, yes, please. Uh, there is a problem, a technical problem with 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 your slides. They keep blinking. Uh, uh, perhaps if you connect them again, uh, it it will. Sorry, they keep linking. They, blinking. They, they... <laughs> It's it's better now. Better, not 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 the same. Let, 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 let me try to open it with PowerPoint. Uh, so I don't I don't know. Do you think now is better? Much better. Much better. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Sorry. Thank you. No, no problem. Uh, so as 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 I was saying, uh, this this uh proposal has uh been under uh much much criticism in, in Brazil. Uh, and I think that the, the, the most uh, uh, critical part on that is that 
Um, as I said before, uh, the legislator intended to design some uh, regulation that would be uh, allegedly more flexible than the DMA. And in order to do that, they have intended to, um, in, uh, instead of proposing a long list of regulatory obligations, they have planned to set only four general principle-based obligations, gen four general principle-based rules, and then it assigns to Anatel the, the legal power to um, specify how these uh, regulations, how these rules should be applied to uh, uh, to any uh, platform, to, to each digital market. So these four general obligations uh, are very, very broad and vague. Uh, for instance, um, uh, the legislation, the, the proposal says uh, that Anatel should uh, adopt uh, the following obligations. Uh, it should establish uh, isonomic and non-discriminatory treatment in the provision of service to professional users and end users. So it's a very general uh, uh, obligation of um, uh, non-discriminatory treatment. Um, the third obligation, it's uh, even more broad and vague, uh, which is the proper use of data collected during its activities. So uh, we, we don't have any clue about what would be the proper use of data and what are the potential implications from, from coming from, from this obligation. And, 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 and a, a broad prohibition of refusing to provide access to, to digital platforms to professional users. Um, so uh, this, these obligations would be more detailed by, by Anatel. Uh, it would be further specified by, by the telecom regulator. Stephen, it's very nice to see you. Hello, nice to see you. Just a question: uh, Does Anatel support this? Um, yeah, yes, yes. Actually, this proposal has gained a strong support not only from the telecom regulator, but especially from the the telecommunications operators. I I, I have the feeling the the telecommunications sector. Uh, believes that Anatel is the best uh, suited agency to, to enforce this legislation. Um, there you go. And of course, the, 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 the law also provides Anatel with uh, broader discretion to, to create new regulatory measures and to create new regulatory obligations. And so uh, I have, uh, that's a little bit of, of a self-promotion here. I'm sorry for that, but I have uh, published a, a, a piece discussing um, more deeply this 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 proposal. Uh, you can see in the the QR code here, and uh, and basically I set some 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 critics about the proposal, showing how it lacks clear objectives. Uh, and and I think that the the most uh, the the most relevant part of the script is uh, is that. I think that th this proposal tries to see uh, digital markets through the lens of public utility regulation. Um, so they, they treat uh, digital markets as they were um, the new kinds of infrastructure that should be regulator, regulated as, as a telecom a network, as a radio and, and things like that. So. I think that's the, the main problem with the, the this, this piece of, of legislation. And moving forward, uh, so uh, in the beginning of this year, we have seen a renowned interest for, for this topic in Brazil because uh, uh, the government, Brazilian government, finally has decided to, to move forward with the discussion. Uh, and on January of this year, uh, the Brazilian uh, Ministry of Finance has launched uh, a public consultation about uh, regulation of digital markets in Brazil. And that was a very, very important uh, move because, as I said before, it was the first time that uh, government, Brazilian government, has demonstrated an interest in, in that topic. Uh, and that public consultation uh, uh, took, uh, took around three months 
And over these three months, a wide range of stakeholders have submitted contributions for, for, this, uh, for this public consultation. Uh, we have seen, especially uh, several industry associations, uh, especially associations from the US, uh, big tech associations uh, and other firms, uh, big tech companies as well, academic institution, all of them have submitted around 60 proposals at, 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 all, at, at all uh for 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 this public consultation and and i think that the the, the ministry of finance has got read um very important inputs for for moving forward in in these, these discussions and i have tried to summarize here what were the main uh themes of the contributions that uh, the, the Minister of Finance has received. It. All of them, of course, are, are publicly available, so you can check them. Uh, some of them are in English, some of them are in Portuguese, of course. Uh, but what, can, what, what we can see uh, from, from a, a broader perspective, uh, first of all, a, a very, uh, a very a repeated concern about the need to balance um, innovation incentives and regulation in Brazil uh, that came especially from, from, from the private sector, of course. Um, some contributions has emphasize, have emphasized uh, concerns about self-preferencing. Self-preferencing, I think, is the, the most uh, common topic in, in these discussions. Um, and of course, um, uh, much concern about what should be the thresholds for designating firms as gatekeepers and who should be the regulator. Um, shall we create a new regulatory agency for that? Shall we assign this legal uh, power to Kaji, to Anatel, to the telecommunications regulator, or to the uh, data protection agency in Brazil that we also have? Uh, so sh who, who should run the show? Uh, that was uh, another interesting uh, controversial that has raised it from from these these contributions, and and with that, uh, the Brazilian Minister of Finance plans to move forward with this. So uh, they are planning to launch a report mm -hmm. about the main findings of this public consultation, and actually this report. Uh, is to be launched next month in Brazil. Uh, so maybe in October we are gonna see, uh, or or even sooner we are gonna see uh, this this public report, and and based on on that contributions and based on the findings of the report, maybe that's not clear if it's gonna happen or not. But maybe uh, the Brazilian government is to uh, propose uh, a new legislation before National Congress in Brazil. Uh, we hope that it might occur in, uh, until the end of this year. We're gonna see that because in Brazil, you're gonna have elections in, in, this, in, this, in the next month. So I don't know if it will happen um, this year yet, but uh, that's, that's interesting to see that the, the Brazilian government is indeed very, very, uh, worried about that topic, and that finally came uh, uh, came to be a priority for 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 the government. And in the context of this public consultation, Kaji has been quite active. Uh, Kaji has submitted a very long contribution. It's actually a sixty page contribution. Uh, I can send you that because we have just translated that to to English. So I would be happy to 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 share that with you, and and that was a very very uh, turning point for the discussions at Kaji, uh, when this contribution was was filed, because actually that was the first time that Kaji has public publicly announced that Kaji believes should adopt a new legislation, a new ex ante legislation for digital markets in order not to, to replace, but to complement the Brazilian Competition Law Act. So that was the, the first time Kaji took uh, this, this position publicly. Uh, and I think that has much to do with 
the developments in, in the international context. It also has to do with uh, the, the new commissioners that have took office uh, at Skaji in, in the beginning of this year. Um, so I think that we, we are living in, in, in a very interesting time of change uh, around what Kaji believes should be uh, adopted to, to in Brazil. Uh, and Kaji has took, uh, uh, has took an approach, a very interesting approach, saying that the problems that we have seen in digital markets are not only market failure problems, but rather they are more related to competition problems that might not be covered by the consumer welfare standard uh, under the terms that we, we currently understand it. So uh, Kaji has proposed that uh, the new legislation should address what we call it uh, ecosystem failures, uh, which would be functional and distribution, distributive failures uh, that affect the generation and appropriation of value within within digital ecosystems. And, and Kaji has also endorsed the view that a new uh, regulatory tool should be adopted not only to promote consumer welfare, but rather to promote contestability and uh, to reduce barriers to entry in some, in some digital markets. Uh, so Kaji has sort of um, um, endorsed a new legislation based on contestability and fairness uh, um, objectives, which is pretty much based on, on the experience of the DMA. But on the, on the other hand, Kaji has uh, proposed that maybe the DMA regulatory model may be not the best one in terms of flexibility. And we think that uh, for now, so far, uh, we have to carefully consider the international regulatory models. Kaji has uh, touched on the, the UK experience upon the, the Germany experience with Article 90A. Uh, so uh, we, we, have, uh, we have argued that maybe it's more important to compare these different approaches and maybe the approach that should be adopted to in Brazil uh, would be more flexible than the DMA, maybe granting more, more powers uh, to, the, to the competition agency to set a code of conduct as it occurs in the UK experience, or maybe allowing more broadly market investigations as it occurs uh, within the, the, the German model. Uh, and Kaji has, of course, took very clearly, uh, they state that uh, Kaji should be the, the regulator of this, this new proposal, should be the one who has the, the legal power to enforce these new obligations. And for that, Kaji considers to create a specialized digital markets unity uh, within our, our structure. Uh, so that was uh, our public statement on that. And as I said before, I think that's a, a landmark for, for the discussions in Brazil, uh, because I think that uh, signals, uh, I would say, a change uh, into Kaji perspectives uh, around that. So far, we have seen uh, Kaji taking uh, the, the view that maybe the, the Brazilian Competition Act would be um, flexible enough to address the, the digital market challenges. But uh, now we can see that Kaji has come to, to understand that um, a new piece of legislation is indeed necessary to, to digital markets. And finally, uh, I'm gonna uh, speak more broadly about AI regulation in Brazil and why is that so important to, to Kaji? Uh, so uh, in Brazil, actually, we are discussing uh, a very interesting proposal of AI regulation. Uh, it is pretty much based on the European uh, AI Act, particularly because uh, the Brazilian uh, proposal, as it occurs if in the EU, takes a risk-based approach. So the proposal has set some uh, AI systems as high risk AI systems. Uh, and for that AI high risk systems, uh, the legislation is intended to promote uh, a, a, more, uh, a more 
cautious approach, so taking uh, several regulatory obligations and governance measures to, to uh, AI um, high-risk systems, uh, which cover some sensitive uh, technologies such as autonomous uh, vehicles, essential service, education, spread scoring, and things like that. So for this kind of, of systems, there, there's going to be a much more a high a burden of regulation. And of course, as it has occurred with the other bill, uh, that it, it was raised a discussion about who is going to be the regulator as well. Uh, and I think that the whole problem making, uh, making a short notice here, I think the real problem is that in Brazil, we have been discussing the adoption of AU-based regulations, but in Brazil, we don't have uh, any uh, institution like the, the European Commission. We have some uh, separated regulatory agencies, which is much more uh, similar to the US institutional model. Uh, so now we are clashing the maybe these two, uh, these two heritages of regulatory stage. Uh, state so for that uh, it's always going to be interesting to 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 raise the question about who is going to be the the regulator uh, and finally uh, the bill has took uh, the decision not to assign uh, the the enforcement of the AI regulation to a single regulator but instead it has established a national regulatory uh, system, a regulatory network, actually, uh, which is named CIA, uh, is a, the system of uh, artificial intelligence regulation. Uh, and it is uh, composed by several authorities and sectoral regulations. So it covers the regulatory agencies that we already have in Brazil. Uh, it covers uh, other public uh, government bodies as well, who are going to cooperate uh, in overseeing AI uh, use in Brazil. So there is a, a network of regulators, actually. And at the center of this network of regulators, uh, we see uh, the uh, Data Protection Agency, who is going to play a role of coordinating this, this network of regulators. And in these networks of regulators, Kaji is included as one of the, 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 the regulators that will compose uh, this overseeing of AI use in Brazil. And based on that, Kaji has saw a very interesting opportunity to contribute to this piece of legislation. And, and for that, we have uh, sent um, uh, uh, a contribution uh, uh, to to the Brazilian Parliament, and uh, taking some 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 positions about what we should be, uh, what we think that should be added uh, uh, in this in this legislation to enforce competition law enforcement in in Brazil. So we basically made recommendations uh, around the topic of um, competition law enforcement. Uh, so we have suggested that the legislation should adopt some clear guidelines about how information and data should be exchanged between the regulators. And we, we, we feel that that's very important for us that when uh, an agency uh, sees a potential violation of competition law to inform Kaji of that and maybe to share with Kaji the relevant data uh, that can be uh, helpful to understand how an algorithm operates and how it can uh, harm competition in these markets. Uh, we also recommended that the legislation provides the opportunity to, to launch uh, joint investigations um, involving several uh, regulators. Actually, we had a very interesting uh, experience some years ago uh, when we have um, launched uh, a jointly investigation with the Data Protection Authority. And that was very, very uh, unique in Brazil. But we think that the legislation should definitely uh, authorize that uh, expressly. And, and also uh, we have 
uh, touch it upon a, a more a sensible topic that we think that uh, the AI regulation in Brazil should adopt an asymmetric regulatory strategy because we think that uh, maybe for small or medium business enterprises, it would be very difficult to comply uh, with the AI regulation. So um, we, we are concerned that uh, AI regulation should escalonate uh, the, the regulatory burden in order to not impede uh, small and medium enterprises to, to compete uh, effectively in, in several markets. And for that, Kaji has proposed uh, has proposed the adoption of a uh, regulatory sandboxes, uh, maybe to test uh, the competitive impact of uh, AI algorithms. And uh, maybe we can do that to balance, to try to to reach a balance between the regulatory oversight and competition and innovation incentives in in several in several areas. And and it, we think that's very important because. Uh, as we have experienced with the LGBT uh, legislation in Brazil, the data protection legislation in Brazil, we have saw that a small uh, and medium business have faced uh, high uh, difficulties in, in implementing that internally. So maybe that's important to give um, some, some flexibility for, for smaller competitors and in AI regulation. And, and in last month, Kaji has finally um, opened the, the, the first uh, investigations involving AI regulation. And, and actually, Kaji has opened four separate investigations um, trying to understand how some AI-related partnerships may or not, um, uh, may or not be mergers for the proposal of the Competition Law Act. So we have taken a look, we are taking a look, uh, for instance, uh, in, in Amazon's acquisition of Anthropophic, which runs the cloud, um, the cloud chatbot. Uh, we are also an investigation Microsoft for the acquisition of Mistro AI uh, and Inflection AI. And finally, Google for, for the acquisition or this a licensee uh, uh, merger program that they have established with Charter AI, which is, by the way, a Brazilian AI uh, company, uh, which is a very interesting company uh, to say. Um, so uh, we are trying to understand whether these acquisitions should have been subject or not to, to merger notification under Brazilian competition law, and what are the potential competitive harms in AI market and the in the AI ad stack, uh, in the AI, AI stack that we could uh, we could raise this in these investigations um, uh, more broadly. So it is actually pretty much similar to what is going on in other jurisdictions. The CMA, for instance, is also uh, taking a closer look at this this very same uh, this very same partnerships and and, and acquisitions. And to finish, uh, so I think that this broad overview uh, shows to us that Kaji is indeed taking uh, further steps and can coming to be more active uh, in the discussions about digital markets regulation and AI. Uh, and I think that especially when it comes to AI, uh, it's very important to, to make sure that Kaji will have the proper legal powers uh, to have access to AI training data, to understand better how some algorithms works. Uh, and for that, we, we should have uh, clear legal powers established in the legislation itself. Um, and alongside with that, with our, everything that is going on, uh, Kaj, of course, is trying to, to make, uh, is trying to, to establish uh, a very interesting dialogue with foreign jurisdictions. We have been trying to, to make conversations regularly uh, within let's jurisdictions, within the European Commission and the United States, uh, especially within the European Commission, uh, in order to understand how the, the first months of the, the DMA enforcement is, is playing out. 
So we are trying to to stay connected with uh, uh, foreign jurisdictions to to understand what is going to be the, the the next steps in this in this regard. So I think that that's all that I would like to 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 cover for today. But I think the most important part of that is the discussion that we can have. Uh, so thank you once again, Julian. I also would like to thank Barbara for, for making this bridge with, with Julian. Thank you very much, Barbara. It's a, a great pleasure to, to be here. Uh, thank you all. Oh, thank you. I think it was a great presentation, uh, very complete uh, in indeed. Um, well, um, we have a, a first couple of volunteers to 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 have questions or or remarks to make. Esteban and then Felipe. Thank you, Julian. Excellent, Victor. Really, really interesting presentation, and uh, it raises a lot of things to to discuss. But maybe uh, one is um, the 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 approach of the the CADES approach to to this regulatory and competition question. You you told us about this. Uh, in the importance of balance between innovation and oversight and, and regulation. And uh, maybe because of particular situation in, in, in Brazil and in Latin America, of may, in, in many markets, the uh, digital players, maybe small or not so small, are like uh, disruptive players against uh, incumbents or traditional incumbents. So this is important to maybe to take in, in, into account. So, but at what extent uh, the, the decision of get involved in this uh, example regulation is maybe if this is a trend that we cannot stop, it is better to be there. And, and I agree, it is better that uh, a competition agency is in the in, at least in the group of agencies that will take into account uh, or, or or will uh, enforce or analyze this kind of regulations to to give this balance and to give uh, to 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 give this approach of a competition approach to this uh, regulatory issues uh, so maybe we can have this kind of um, philosophical or uh, discussions about the what is better, but there is also a political economy issue that if this is gonna happen, uh, we cannot be out of this uh, trend. I, I, I think this kind of discussion has been present in, in agency discussions in, in, in ICN from many years. So, um, if you can say something about uh, if this approach has uh, to do with this this statement of CADE uh, about all this uh, kind of regulation. Yes, yes, but I think that you have described it uh, with perfection what was the feeling uh, that Kaji has felt uh, when this, this public consultation was launched in the beginning of this year. Uh, of course, uh, uh, some, some of CADI officials were already uh, arguing uh, that we should be more active in, in digital markets and so on. But I think that uh, after the, the first proposal uh, came to light, uh, especially assigning the legal power to the telecommunication regulator, I think that that has triggered, uh, has prompted uh, a feeling uh, that Kaji should be involved in that. As you said, uh, we, we, we believe that the train has already left the station. So it's, it's, it's better to, to, to be on board. And, and I think that uh, what, I, what I see right now is that uh, we, we were also discussing that uh, internally a lot uh, over the last, the last uh, week. Uh, we think that uh, maybe the the best regulatory design, uh, maybe it's more important nowadays to, to discuss what is the best regulatory design rather than discuss 
we should or we should not adopt a new legislation. I think that we have already uh, moved it from, from that page. And I think that now we, we should try to grasp what is the, the, the best uh, the best model that we should follow. And I think that's what, what we are trying to do now within the, this public consultation and, and so on. Thank you. Thank you. Don Felipe. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Felipe. I think that we can we can hear you. Thank you, Victor. Uh, very interesting. Uh, I, I have three specific questions. The first one is uh, re regarding the, the the current draft of of the DMA. Uh, if if there have been any discussions in the Congress or with the proposal vis a vis the the, the government regarding any rules to split prerogatives uh, between Anatel and and Cadi. My my second question would be on. Any comments uh, regarding difficulties on capacity building, uh, especially for hiring uh, uh, professionals um, connected or related uh, or, uh, with technology, uh, which I think it must be something uh, difficult to attract. I mean, to to a public entity. And and my third question uh, would be. Uh, you 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 mentioned a, a couple of times the 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 local flavor, you know, the local effects of of the Brazilian reality. I mean, especially vis-a-vis -vis, um, Europe. So uh, I'm I'm wondering if if you can articulate a, li a little more. I mean, what what that does mean? Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so uh, first of all, I think that. Um, starting from, from the third question, as I see it right now, I think that we are living a very interesting time to discuss more broadly digital regulation in Brazil. And that covers several aspects, not only economic regulation or competition regulation, but uh, over the last two years, we had very intense uh, a very intense discussion in Brazil about uh, social media regulation, about uh, uh, we, we have been discussing a proposed bill which is called the fake news regulation, but actually it's much more broader than, than the, the than fake news problem. And it is pretty much based on the DSA. Uh, the, the last proposal that we have been discussing, it is very similar to the DSA. And back in 2018, we have adopted a data protection legislation, which is pretty much similar to the GDPR, to the EU GDPR that we have also uh, imported to, to Brazil. And now we are leaving this discussion about uh, the Brazilian DMA. So I, I think that we might be under a, a Brussels effect more broadly uh, in terms of digital regulation for, for, for Brazil. Uh, but I think that we have these institutional um, challenges uh, in, in terms that we don't have uh, a European Commission in Brazil. So we have uh, separated uh, regulatory agencies, which are pretty much focused on, on specific sectors, uh, a telecommunication agency, an en energy agency, and so on. So I, I think that we are now facing how to translate the European uh, effect uh, the, the dispersal effect into how to build up uh, institutions that would be uh, adapted to the AU model of regulation. So I think that's the, 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 third, the third question. Um, regarding the, 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 the first question, uh, so after this, the, the first draft of the Brazilian DMA was proposed, um, the, the, the Congresswoman, which is the reporter of, of this piece of legislation, she have uh, she has uh, promoted some uh, public debates about that. And she has invited um, academics, uh, civil society representatives, um, Kaji representatives were there actually, uh, but they have made this very broad discussion about uh, the law 
but they did not move forward to discuss the specific topic about who should be the regulator. So so far we don't have we don't have any clue about whether or not this legislation is going to move forward or not. And the Congress in Brazil, the the legislative process is very very tricky. Uh, it can uh, move forward all of a sudden uh, from nothing to uh, to approved legislation. So we we do not have any clue about uh, how that is gonna is gonna move forward or not. And finally, about uh, capabilities and expertise, I think that that's the most challenging part for Kaji. Uh, we have only very few data specialists at Kaji right now. Uh, we have a very small team, actually. Uh, and especially because of that, I think that maybe it would not be uh, beneficial for us to have a DMA-like legislation in terms of the regulatory model, because I think that the DMA requires uh, a very uh, high uh, expertise to implement and to uh, and to uh, make this uh, oversight of how the the exempty obligations are being adopted by the gatekeepers and so on. I think that maybe the German model or the UK model, where you have this market investigation, which is much more broadly and maybe more common and more similar to competition law investigation ones, maybe that would be more a fit to, to Kaji right now, as we do not have uh, a, a very large team. Paulo? Thank you. Thank you, Julian. Can you hear me well? Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. Hello, Victor. Thank you for the very comprehensive um, presentation. I cannot say that I'm surprised because I've known uh, Victor for a while. But uh, um, I, I was wondering if you can um, share with us any reflections more broadly. Um, at the OECD, we have been investigating and studying this topic, as you know, and you spoke about models and best models. And we will look at the different initiatives around the world. Um, you mentioned the UK, um, the, the German, the, the, the Brussels one, uh, the Brazilian one, of course. But we can basically put try to put them into two big categories: one more principles based, and of and another more rules based provisions, right? So one with more flexibility, the with more principles, with advantages and inconvenience, and and another set of of solutions more rules-based approach. What is your take on this? Do you have a preference and how do you see things moving forward in Brazil? Yeah, I think that's the very key question for how what is the best model that we should adopt. But I think that so far, I think that the principle-based approach would be better for, for Brazil. Um, and, and I think that I, I've been uh, following the discussions in the EU about the DMA um, and, and the DMA uh, compliance system seems to me very, very complex to be adopted in Brazil. So we had seen uh, this first round of compliance reports and now the commission has started uh, the, the non-compliance investigations and so on. So that, is, that seems to be very, very complex. And, and I think that we, we would not have uh, the, the proper um, technical expertise, expertise and people at Kaji right now to engage in such such a complex a uh, system of, of compliance. Uh, it seems to me very, very complex. Uh, I think that last week they have also opened it, a new kind of investigation, a third one, which is the investigation to further specify new kinds of obligations. So there are plenty of uh, investigations going on uh, at the very same time. That's that seems very very tough to to handle in a in a small agency like like Haji. Makes sense. Thanks. Thank you, Paulo. It's very nice to see you. I have a question. Um, what um, and perhaps in the meantime, uh, the rest of the people can, can think on. If whether they want to share their experiences in other jurisdictions, then I'll, I'll leave the floor to, to Felipe. But one question, um, you said that, that about the political context of this, uh, um, um, do you said that you have upcoming elections. 
um, let's see the elections. Um, how likely do you see, even after the elections, uh, to 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 have a Congress approve uh, this type of of regulations? That's a very important question, and actually, I think that the discussion about digital markets regulation or competition regulation is pretty much right now restricted to the competition of bubble in Brazil. I don't think that he has uh, reached, uh, you know, the political debate, I would say. The topic about digital regulation, which is pretty much important for politicians in Brazil, it's the topic of content moderation and fake news and disinformation. That is the topic that will definitely uh, come over uh, the, the, the next few months, I think. Uh, I think that after the elections, maybe uh, this year, I think it's 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 hard to see uh, any piece of legislation uh, moving on, any relevant piece of legislation moving on, uh, because uh, at the beginning of the, the next year in Brazil, we are gonna also have elections uh, for who is gonna be um, the, the, the chief of the House of Chambers and, and the Senate in Brazil. So I think that uh, only after that we can see what is going to be the, the political agenda for the Brazilian Congress uh, over the, the next year. But I think the top one priority uh, is going to be the, the, the discussion about uh, social networks and fake news proposal and, and, and things like that. Um, and only after that, I think that we are going to have some some discussion and also uh, AI regulation because this AI project it, it is going to be voted in the Senate this year, uh, and then in the beginning of next year it will probably move uh, to the House of 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 change, to, to the lower house in Brazil. Um, so I think that uh, AI. Uh, AI regulation and, and uh, content moderation regulation would be the top priorities. I think that digital markets regulation would be in third place. Thanks. Thanks. Maybe you have a question, uh, you raised your hand, but... Because I'm shy. Uh, but but he, he, here's the question. Uh, why the hurry? I mean, why? why, why? Well, I mean, Brazil, I mean, if you compare in the region, I mean, obviously it, it, it is more advanced, I mean, on terms of those regulations. But but then we, we, we don't know the results of the of the regulation in Europe. Uh, we, we, we don't even know the result of all the cases uh, uh, in the U.S. I mean, uh, we, we, we don't really know about what's what's going on in UK. I mean, they, they, they are just setting up their rules. And and then also we have the, the experience on Germany. So so my, my question would be, I mean, don't you think that maybe it makes sense to just wait and see, I mean, to see if if there is a, the best model, I mean, um, uh, being raised uh, in, in the countries from the north? Or, or wh why do you think um, uh, as Brazil or, or uh, as any other country in the region, it, it would make sense to, to try to uh, adapt something from abroad? I mean, uh, if we really don't know the, the results of, of those regulations, especially, I mean, if, if we, we know that all those topics are, are extremely complex. You know? uh, and, and and we also know that it's very sensitive. I mean, to political um, influences. You no, know? uh, so um, so don't you think it it, it could be risk? I mean, or, or it, it is risky. I mean, to 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 start this this process or this discussion uh, so early. And and also my second question is. Uh, what, what about the U.S. influence? I mean, in Brazil, I mean, you 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 made uh, several reference to, to to Europe. I mean, it's, it's like you you're just focusing on 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 Europe. You you also made reference to UK and Germany. But what 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 is going on in the U.S.? I mean, it's 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 very interesting. I mean, especially the cases. So so my question would be, uh, what what do you think is is the U.S. 
um, uh, impact or influence, I mean, on, on Caddy or, or on the Brazilian reality? You know, that, that there are very, very uh, important questions. Uh, uh, first, uh, our competition law model, actually, our competition law act is pretty much based on the U.S. system rather than on, on the, the, the European one. Uh, for instance, we don't have uh, exploitative abuses in Brazil, for instance. Uh, we, we are pretty much focused on exclusionary facts um, under the role of reason approach and, and so on. So, uh, And that comes from the influence that the U.S. competition law has played uh, and during the 90s in Brazil, where we have the reforms uh, um, during during that years, uh, and so that is the, the Brazilian DNA, uh, the Brazilian competition law DNA is pretty much much more closer um, to to the U.S. system than than to the European one. Uh, and I, and I think that you have a very fair point that uh, maybe we should wait and see uh, because we are not so sure about how this these new legislations are going to play out um, and uh, foreign jurisdictions. But I think that uh, from the Brazilian perspective, I, I think that on the other hand, uh, our recent experience has shown it that. Uh, our abuse of dominance investigations are very, very slow. And that is the, the problem that concerns me most because as I said before, the Google Shop investigation uh, took seven and a half years. We have uh, discussions, very important discussions right now uh, in other markets that are completely under the Kaji's radar. So maybe, and. Uh, the new legislation is important to um, to set some some principles for digital platforms and for digital markets that can that can came into effect uh, re, uh, regardless of the need uh, of um, investigations uh, concrete investigations. So I think that's the most relevant part. Uh, and and. And as you said, I think that uh, what is going on right now in the U.S. is very interesting to see because they kind of are moving forward uh, within the very same uh, competition law framework that they uh, they they ever had. Um, could we do that in Brazil? I think maybe maybe we could do that, uh, but the problem is that we we don't see these investigations coming up. We don't see these cases uh, being brought before Kaji. Uh, and maybe uh, the, the whole problem here is that we we have been very very uh, high dependent on on abuse of dominance investigations for that to 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 come uh, to come and and actually we are not uh, so um, so fast in these investigations and I think that's the the, the whole problem. Stable. Yeah. Yes, uh, maybe a follow up on, on uh, Julian's question um, or complementary issue. Uh, do you think the the issue, uh, the the ex issue, Elon Musk uh, Twitter issue in Brazil that has uh, an impact on the political debate of this kind of regulations and and maybe uh, because of the the, the political uh, impact uh, and it, this kind of issue could um, uh, generate a political divide between who are in favor of Elon Musk and Twitter or this kind of uh, uh, not to moderate uh, contents uh, of, of uh, social networks and, and the other, and, and maybe there are also right and uh, left uh, visions or this this kind of political divide um, of this issue that will have a, an impact on the discussion of all the rest of regulatory uh, topics to digital platforms. Yes, I, I think you are definitely right because uh, to be quite honest, uh, I I was believing that these discussions, this 
political divisions would only affect the debate about social networks regulation in Brazil. But this year, as the AI regulation started to move forward in the Congress, we have seen actually the pretty much same debate um, as the, the proposal has come to be much more um, uh, under the scrutiny of a political debate, uh, especially over the last two months, I would say, in Brazil. Um, so people in social networks uh, started to claim that the AI regulation uh, would uh, lead to some sort of a suppress of the freedom of speech in Brazil. And then all this, this, this discussion came up. And eventually, I think that the Senate did not uh, did not vote it yet uh, the, the AI regulation because this kind of noise has started to to be raised and in, 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 in the internet. And uh, I am not sure if that will eventually occur uh, in the in the digital markets regulation, the competition regulation of digital markets proposal. Uh, but I think that's definitely a background that we cannot ignore because uh, the, the debate is very, very politicized in Brazil. I know that you, you might be following uh, what is going on with X in Brazil, which was banned by a Supreme Court decision. So, of course, uh, the, the debate is, is very, uh, very uh, high, uh, reach at a high temperature right now in Brazil. So it can affect all of these this proposals as well. Thank you. Thanks, Victor. I see no other raised hands. So, um, Victor, we have a tradition that you have the your concluding remarks. Thank you. I just would like to to thank you, Julian, for for this opportunity. Uh, as I said before, it's very important to us to to have uh, a closer uh, contact with. Uh, Latin America experts. So it is. Very, it was very, very uh, insightful uh, discussions. And thank you, thank you for that. And I, of course, I, I, I am at your disposal to share the, the, the slides and also Kaji materials if you if you want to. That would be great. Uh, thank you, and thank you also Barbara for uh, being the bridge between us two and and and. Um... I hope to see you in, in future events as well. Next month, we are going to have uh, one on a hot topic, which will be um, uh, competition and sustainability. Uh, and um, it will be the president of, of the Antitrust Authority in Portugal who will be uh, speaking about this. So uh, it should be a very interesting one as well. That will be on October 24th. Until then, thanks for everyone for, for joining us and I look forward to seeing you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye, Julian. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.